morning. And then on that note, um, it's a very, very special day for Tess. It's Tess's birthday today. Oh, <laughs> hey. Happy birthday. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. birthday. Yeah. And then wow. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy Harry, Susanna taught us the sign. Happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. What happened? Yeah. I can barely hear them. Yeah, I know. They're very... I, I'm going to try to get on another computer, Cyrus. <laughs> okay. Um, and it looks like Adalis is joining us here in a second, too. So welcome, everyone, to United Friday, every Friday. Um, so today we have a very special guest. It's Sean, who is a very oh, well, nice. musician. <laughs> and he's going to facilitate the discussion and just music appreciation and how it plays into therapy and cultures. And we're just going to have a cool discussion about it. We'd love to have everyone's <laughs> perspectives. So we're going to start out with introductions so we all know who's here. So I'll go ahead and start. Um, and I'd also like to do a brief land acknowledgement too. Um, we do this with most of our um, most of our events. So um, if we could just take a second and just acknowledge that the land <clears throat> on is of indigenous land and where we are. Um, and just take notice of that and just know that it was um, colonized by people before us and just acknowledging that. Thank you. And I'll go ahead and start. My name is Sam and I'm the Time Bank Coordinator here at DACU and your usual host for United Friday. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And if everyone could just introduce themselves by their name and their pronouns, that'd be great. And I'll go ahead and start mm -hmm. in no particular order, just by what's on my screen, but mm -hmm. kind of start with the people on the phone first. Um, we'll go ahead and start with Charles. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, you just did. <laughs> what are your pronouns, Charles? Well, I got lots of pronouns. Which one would you like, a him? Yeah, so if, uh, if so, if you left work. Your jacket, how about if you left your jacket in a different room and someone said this is his jacket, is that okay if we use that? That'll work. Yeah, so pronouns are um, words that we use in place of your name. So he, him, his, she, her. Yeah, well, yeah. well I've had other people use other words, other things that weren't pronouns in place of my name. Oh, yeah. Well, as long as we get the one that you prefer, that's all that. That's yes, we want, we, want it, we want to respect everyone's. You'd be awesome. surprised at the pronouns I've been called. <laughs> Great, Charles. Well, thank you so much for coming. Mm. And then we'll go ahead and move to Cyrus, since he's on the phone with Carrie. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, I'm Cyrus. Whoops. Um, I'm Cyrus Deacon Easterlin. Uh, I'm with the Steering Committee and Time Bank. And um, here's Homie Mouse. Okay. Can we also do he, him, his? Is that okay? And in addition to those, to Homie and Mouse. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, we can use Homie Mouse in addition to his. Okay, got it. Well, thank you so much, Cyrus, for joining us. And since Carrie is right there with you, we'll have Carrie go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm distracted trying to get on a better sounding computer. It's Carrie Bachman. I'm here, um, director of DACU, and I always enjoy United Friday. And my pronouns are she, her, hers. Thanks, Carrie. Now we'll move over to Mikhail. Hi, I'm Mikhail. Um, I'm on the Time Bank Steering Committee, and I my pronouns are they. And the speakers went out again. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and repeat that again, Mikhail? Uh, your sure. pronouns. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. Great, thank you so much, Mikhail. Thanks, and then we'll yeah. go ahead and move on to Carl. I'm Carl, and uh, pronouns are him, he, and his. Great. Thank you so much for coming, Carl. And then I'll go ahead and move. You're welcome. To Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Susana, and I work for New Mexico Commission for Deaf and Hard of Hearing. Can you hear me? <laughs> and uh, I am a Time Bank member now. I think yes. I am, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you. My so much. pronouns are she, her, and hers. Thanks, Susana. Yes, we're so excited to have Susanna part of our time bank now. So exciting. And then we'll move on to the birthday girl, Tess. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tess. And I'm happy to be on here. 
And <laughs> so she, her, her. Great. Thank you so much, Tess. We're so excited to have you here and share this day with you. So thank you for coming. And then we'll go ahead and go to Beth. Hi, uh, I'm Beth. I'm part of the Beloved community and I work as their vista right now. And my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Thanks for coming, Beth. And then we'll go ahead and move to Adalis. Hello everyone, my name is Alice, and my preferred pronouns are she, her, and hers. Nice to see everyone. <laughs> Great. Good and, to then, see you, Alice. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and move to our presenter today. So Sean, go ahead and introduce yourself. And from here, you can just go ahead and take the show and we'll just launch into you. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, and my name is Sean. I am not just a Time Bank member, but uh, also a member of the steering committee and work on the group exchange uh, uh, subcommittee. And that is actually part of uh, this program here today. This type of uh, um, program is, you know, the, the, the group exchange. And we, would, we had looked for, you know, a host for today. And uh, um, you know, I, 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 I've been wanting to, to do one of these, but I don't really profess to be an expert in anything. So I was a little uncomfortable. That's why I didn't want to, you know, set forth like directly a lesson. And I wanted it to be more like a, uh, a round table discussion or something like that. But I did want to try and leave you guys with like, you know, a little information. So um, what I wanted to talk about today, you, you may have noticed we were going to talk a little bit, you know, roughly about music appreciation little bit about the role of music in our lives and kind of most importantly the takeaway like how how we can use music in our lives um, as um, you know like kind of a self counseling or you know self searching uh, as medicine that type of thing and so <clears throat> let's see uh, normally I don't have a lot of trouble talking uh, but usually sometimes when I'm put on the spot I'll draw a blank so hopefully that won't happen but i want you guys to feel free to just jump in to the conversation and and we can have some good back and forth here because um one of the things about music is the way you know it um, promotes thought and promotes um you know people have understandings about songs and then they can come together and have empathy about those understandings or you know that type of thing so um Let's see, I guess one way we could start a little bit. Um, is anybody here uh, either a musician themselves or taking any kind of uh, music theory or at least familiar with the, you know, do, re, mi kind of uh, Western musical scale? I am. That's Cyrus cool. and Oh yeah, Cyrus, of course, buddy. And, oh my gosh. I just squished it up. Oh. Sorry about that, guys. Oh. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then people on the phone, uh, just feel free to chime in if we ask you to like raise your hand or something. Definitely you can yeah. speak out. So just real briefly without getting into uh, too much minutiae or detail, um, everyone, uh, uh, a lot of people are familiar with the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And, um, what that is, is just a little kind of mnemonic representation of the seven notes of the Western musical scale. And it's the interesting thing because um, uh, just speaking to anybody who's completely not familiar, you know, you listen to music on the radio, you hear what appears to be so many notes, but it really boils down to the ear is only hearing one of 12 notes. And then uh, the way our Western musical scale is set up, uh, we, it, we, pick seven of those tones out of the 12 and you may notice that you know uh, seven isn't a number that goes very easily into 12 so what ends up happening is it's not even skips that's uh, not even an even pattern that's why um, uh, the, the, that's why there's the black keys on the piano keyboard because those represent um, the white keys represent all of the notes in C major and then those blacks would represent the sharps and flats or the notes that you wouldn't need out of the 12 notes to create um, a, uh, 
a C scale. So that was always kind of real fascinating to me um, when I was discovering music uh, because I, I, I kind of wondered, you know, there's kind of a, a nurture versus nature thing. So I wondered if, there, if our, our ears were hearing that because we were conditioned to hear 12 notes or if there was something uh, fundamental to that in physics and the way that the waves work. And it's pretty interesting because there are some fundamental relationships in the waves. And so are, are anybody familiar with some of the terms like, like um, you'll hear like a third or a perfect fifth or some of these terms thrown around when musicians are talking about different keys or chords, things like that. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Yeah, um, it's familiar, but I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's real interesting because, um, and I wish I had a better way to demonstrate this. I don't trust the microphone on my computer. Um, but what you will notice sometimes, and if you have someone with an acoustic guitar and they, they are familiar with harmonics, you can ask them to show you some of the harmonics on a string. And this is one of the things that really blew my mind when I found it out. Because um, uh, who's heard of Pythagoras? You know, he's got the... Uh, his uh, theory of right triangle. Yeah, there you go, Mikhail. And uh, yeah, and he's also uh, noticed that if you have a wire or a guitar string, that type of thing, and you pluck it, it will make a certain note. And if you have the distance, it will make that same note, but one octave higher. So he noticed the difference there between um, uh, the way our ear will hear a repeated sound uh, whenever you reach that point of whenever you increase the wavelength and the wavelength is exactly twice um, what it was before. And so what, what you can do is if you touch a guitar string really lightly on the 12th fret, which is the 12th um, step up the, you know, it's about in the middle of the guitar, um, you can either push down that note and you'll hear a note that's one octave above whichever string you're on. So if you're on the string of E, then you'll hear one octave above E. So um, if you lift off of the fret and just barely touch the string, you can hit it again and you'll hear that note anyways, because the way waves work, um, you have the guitar string that's held on either side and it tries to uh, flat back and forth, uh, vibrate at its uh, thickest point in the center, but that creates also some smaller shapes inside. And so what Pythagoras noticed was that um, out of that string, you can get not just um, a higher note of E, uh, one octave higher, but if you uh, find the sections where the, um, there's a third or two fifths uh, along that length of the entire string, you'll hear a, another note that's higher than the original note. But if you listen carefully and you can use other guitar strings to identify what that note is, you find out that it's actually not the note of E which is, was blew my mind when I heard that because then you can hit the open string again and then go back to that harmonic and then you hear that, that note um, still ringing in the E. So it didn't make sense to me why I could hear a B or an A inside of an E string, but my ear still made sense of that. And then it turns out that that's fundamentally how Pythagoras came up with what, what, what we have today is the Western musical scale. Um, he found these relationships of, of harmonies. Um, but it turns out if you have real sensitive uh, equipment like we do today, um, uh, who, has anybody here ever heard of the uh, term A440 as far as tuning? Does that sound familiar to anybody? That's just the idea that um, at, at some point, and I think this is kind of interesting too, in the past before they have all the cool electrical, um, you know, tuners and things we do now, I don't know if anybody's tried to use a tuning fork, it's not easy, but uh, literally in medieval times, they would have sometimes one tuning fork in, an, in I, th I think they had one in France or something like that, that was like the official A. And they didn't actually at first know what wavelength that was until they had, uh, you know, more sophisticated electronic computers. They noticed that it was pretty close to the frequency of 440. And if they rounded it to 440, that made a lot of uh, real easy mathematics. Then they could say that the octave below that A was 110 
because 110 vibrations per second is, uh, you know, half of 220. Or if you vibrated the strings 440 times per second, then you would get a, a, a key of, a, uh, pardon me, the note of A, one octave above that A. So they basically just rounded it because that was an easy way to do it. And they saw what they, what everybody had agreed to being an A was um, already pretty close. And that made the math real easy. So that's one interesting thing is sometimes you will hear people talk about music that's written in A432 instead of A440. And there's all kinds of interesting YouTube videos about this where they'll play popular music, usually slowed down a little bit so that it's in a lower key. And a lot of people will refer to that as kind of a universal harmonic or think that that's um, that if there are objectively notes, that means something in the universe in an objective music scale outside of what our ear hears and the way our brain sorts that out, then, um, I gosh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, so I mean, more, some people think that A32 is more of a quote unquote cosmic tone or, a, you know, maybe would fit into, uh, m m would be maybe like a, a, I don't know, I'm kind of going off track there. But uh, so they, once they figured out that, if they decided that A was going to be 440, then you can extrapolate from that what the other notes in the scale would, for A would be. But at that point, they noticed that what they thought or what to my ear sounded like in A or in or a B when I was hitting the harmonics on that E string, it turns out that they're just a little bit sharp or flat um, of what notes your your ear sorts them into so uh, to me that 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 might say that it's something in the design of our ear and the anatomy of our ear um and the way our brain sorts that out that might be uh why we, after 12 notes our brain hears a new note at the next octave higher so i don't want to belabor that too long because that's kind of a little esoteric but um uh the, the long and short of it is that with the two steps that were easiest to hear, the harmonics that were easiest to draw out on a string were, of course, when you half it and it gives the octave higher. <clears throat> when you do it at one third of the length of the string, it gives you the third, or two fifths of the length of the string will give you the fifth, as they call it. And so uh, they noticed when you played those notes together, it made a really pleasant sound. Those became the basis of our chords. So you hear major chords, minor chords, and things like that. And that's, that gets beyond the scope of what we wanted to do today. But I just wanted to point that out that I thought that that was very cool that in the beginning, there's a problem, first of all, of everybody agreeing on what an actual note of an A would be. And then there's a, an additional discussion of how, whether that's an arbitrary number, or whether um, there's some type of, you know, cosmic um, secret or a secret, uh, you know, uh, some aspect of physics being revealed there. And, um, and then finally, there's like how we do receive it. And I think that there was a real interesting uh, quote I heard attributed to Beethoven, but it was from a movie. So probably just written for the actor, you know. Um, but he, he had this point about music being like hypnotism and that it was one of the few things where you uh, you could uh, cause you know you could have someone else have a have a feeling more outside of just how you would explain the emotion to them you know how music can make you feel a certain way and that kind of gets into the practicality of what I I thought we could do today because uh, I thought we could take a little time and talk about how music has um, improved our lives and ways that we found to use music that. Um, help us like some people will use it for relaxation meditation that type of thing sometimes we'll use it to cheer up in a different way if they want to hear uh, a song that makes them feel nostalgic or that type of thing and you know i just was was hoping we could discuss how how linked to emotion music is and how um we might be able to uh, share some kind of ways that we uh, come at music or that music helps us that maybe each of us haven't uh, discovered each on our own.
And you know, I think that can be valuable kind of knowledge in this kind of situation we have today where you know, we've got a lot of social distancing going on, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression and things like that. And a lot of times we're finding ourselves alone at home and sometimes with extra time on our hands. So um, I was hoping we could just kind of point each other in the way of cool music and talk about times that music has, you know, uh, improved our life, sometimes saved our life. And, you know, we could just kind of have a little discussion about that. But I didn't want to uh, purport to be any kind of expert on music theory or, uh, uh, you know, a uh, an authority or anything like that. So I was a little hesitant to, to take the whole presentation. So I'm hoping we could use that as a little jumping off point. Can anyone think of, can anyone think of, uh, because whenever I think of music in my life, I'll think of milestones of, you know, a first, a first time I heard a song I liked enough that I wanted to go buy an, an album of it. Or um, I remember one time I was real young, and having a bad day and was having to do some chores in the garage and there was a radio playing in the garage that was playing like Willie Nelson's version of the city of New Orleans and that was, and it improved my day and that was the first time that I realized that you know music can improve your life or it can take you from a, a bad mood into a good mood and it can be used as medicine somewhat in that regard so Using that as a jumping off point, did anyone want to jump in with some kind of anecdote about a time that music has helped them or time their eyes were open to music? Hey, Sean, and then before we start that, we do have a couple more people that have joined. So let's go ahead and oh, cool. introduce those people and then we'll go ahead and just do like a round table. And if you want me to facilitate that and call people, that's completely fine with me. I can do that. Awesome. So we'll go ahead. It looks like we have Aaron and Snickers joining us. Hi, Erin. So good to see you again. Hi, Erin. <laughs> and Erin actually told me through the chat that her pronouns are she, her, hers. So I just want to let everyone know that too. <laughs> and then we also have someone, um, Steve, on the phone. I, I think they're joining. Steve, are you able to unmute and introduce yourself? And Steve, I did see that you had put a thumbs up, so that's great. Um, are you able to, I'm gonna ask you to unmute just to introduce yourself. Are you able to do that? And if not, you can always use the chat um, at the bottom of your screen and let me know if you're having any type of technical difficulties. But welcome, Steve. <laughs> okay, so Sean, like has Sean had said, um, we just wanna have a discussion on, I think we should just pick a time just I'll, I'll leave it pretty generalized of, of a of some type of song or anything that has been profound or how music has helped us at all so i'm just going to go ahead and call on people just so everyone um gets a chance to talk and maybe keep it a little bit brief just so we can hear from everyone um i'll say um maybe a minute a minute and a half um, that we'll have for each person. I don't know if I'm doing the math right in my head if we have enough time, but again, if we can keep it brief, that'd be awesome. So I'll go ahead. And before and, we, uh, oh, go ahead. Here, before we do that, I just want to see as an experiment if I can get this to work because I've got an acoustic guitar here. So you should, can you guys hear that E note? Is that pretty clear to you guys? So that's the note of E. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. This is the 12th fret I talked about. So that's what the note, the, the E, um, one octave above sounds like. And you'll see, I'm not going to press down the string. I'm just barely touching it with the tip of my finger. And you see my hands are off now, and it's still making that. So that's called a harmonic there. So that note that's ringing is going to be one half of the entire string. So I know it's an E note, but this is what I'm talking about here. That's another E, so that's expected. But you get here. Where's that? Oh, there it is. You can hear that that is not an E. That is an E. That's a B, I think. And, but you can hear how it, 
like ooh, and then boo. But you can hear how in the boo that ooh is ringing. Can you hear it in the background? Can you hear how that note is still interwoven within the E? Yeah, Sean, that was great. Thank you for doing a visual demonstration of that because it was a uh -huh. little because I'm a visual learner, so it's a little hard for me to follow. I mean, I got it, but it's a little hard to follow whenever. It's yeah. So cool. just like real brief. So real briefly, it'd be like that's an E. Uh, that's also an E, but you'll see that there's these different. That one's harder to hear, but it goes B. So, so all those notes will be interwoven in E, and not all of those are the, technically the note of E. So that that was that real fascinating concept I was talking about, and that's where it leads to our ears start starting to make patterns out of it um, that sound pleasant to us. All right, that's Great. All <laughs> Thanks, Sean. I appreciate that. Well, um, you already discredited yourself by saying you're not an expert, so we don't believe you in that part anymore. So we'll go ahead and go with our uh, discussion now. So I think we'll go ahead and start with Charles. And again, if we can keep these a little bit brief so everyone can talk, we can talk at the end if we have more time. So Charles, go ahead and if you have a story for us, we'd love to hear it, a short story. Well, I don't, uh, I don't have to play anything, so I better just be quiet. Or what about like a song that has really influenced you or just like, just anything that music has maybe changed your life in some way or just left a good memory on you? I know we were just actually talking about music right before this presentation, right, Charles? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's all kinds of music. I always like listening to music and I got to up with a, an awful lot of really nice varieties of music. We had uh, what they call big band music. We had the blues and the uh, rock and roll got started when I was a youngster. And uh, I enjoyed a lot of that music from all of those types of things. And to this day, I've got a box here, probably got a hundred uh, CDs in it. That's all different kinds of music. Uh, now I discovered that YouTube has a, a wealth of stuff. And so I quite often go and listen to music um, on YouTube that I enjoyed as a child or a young, young adult. I was just thinking one of the ones I used to enjoy dancing, we used to dance holding each other. Okay, that was an old fashioned way of doing stuff. And one of the songs that I always liked dancing to was a one was one called Silver Threads Among Among the Gold. It was just a, it was a very pleasant uh, waltz to dance to. And I, well, it was years later when I heard the words to it, and it was realized it was a, a, like a grandpa singing to his wife about how they'd grown old together and she'd never seemed to age on it. See, and I thought, well, how nice, you know, have somebody. You know, you're 85 years old and tell somebody 83, you don't look so bad, sweetie. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of fun that the guy wrote a, a, a song. It was a beautiful song. Wow, Charles. That's a that's great nice. story. Yeah. <clears throat> See, that is, that's awesome. And I wrote that, I wrote that song down. You said it was Silver Thread Against the Gold? Among the Gold. Among. I will go ahead and yeah. look that up. Thank you for sharing, Charles. That's awesome. Yeah, if you do, if you want a, a good version of it, there's a guy named Billy Vaughn that the orchestra played it. Great. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Charles has seen it all. If you've seen big band and jazz, rock and roll, the blues, <laughs> and now into all the music we have today, that's an amazing uh, slice of human history you've seen. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of fun. <laughs> Not to mention a man on the moon here and there, or a person on the moon and such. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't think of it. Well, you, well, my grandma went from horse and buggy to the space age. So wow. I was, a, yeah. They were born in the and 1880s. Gonna, yeah, and me, I'm probably going to go from the 
uh, space age back to the stone age from the way things are looking nowadays. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again for sharing, Charles. And I think we'll go ahead and move to the other person on the phone, which is Cyrus. Is Cyrus still there, Carrie? Yes, he is. I'm. Yes, he's. I've unmuted you, Cyrus. Can you um, share, Cyrus, something that is how music in, impacts and enriches your life? Um, there was one time about, I want to say 30 years ago, <laughs> that it, there was three songs that really impacted me in a major way and got rid of fear. When we got on the airplane, they were playing a, a, a Chopin string, but it was you know, the bass level string um, concerto he did got us all relaxed. Then we started singing C-130. Right after that, somebody put on their little Walkman that had a speaker, and they weren't even supposed to have it. Another one bites the dust, and another one bites the dust, and they threw us all out of the airplane. And those three songs put together made it a lot easier that first time I dropped from um, 3,000. Oh, no, 2,500. Oh my gosh. Did you have a bunch of turbulence or a big drop in the plane? Say again? Uh, did you have like, uh, you said there was like turbulence and you dropped from 3,000 feet to 2,500 feet? Is that what you said? Yeah. It was my first parachute jump for, um... Oh, a parachute. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, we did, they did the, the, the uh, Chopin when we got on the plane to get us up in the air. Then after a minute, we started, you know, singing cadence. You know, the C-130 uh -huh. cadence. I know y'all know it. What oh, is okay. that? that I, I don't sense. think we do know that. Can you share what that is? humor but I I bet it broke the tension though. <laughs> Um, music for me often helps me um, connect to other countries where I've lived and worked, which are near and dear in my mind and my memory, but not so near and dear in terms of being able to be there. And so I love listening to music from when I lived in Mexico, when I lived in the Dominican Republic, when I lived in Zaire. Um, it's just, it just takes me back and it gives me the sense of happiness and like calm that those places still exist um and i love dancing to it also that's like one of my favorite favorite things so i'll just turn it on really loud and dance around the house like a crazy person it's wonderful i love it that's, that's beautiful carrie thank you so much for sharing 
Yeah, so that's another point is that it can connect cultures. Oh, it looks like we have Austin. Hi, Austin. Hi, Samantha. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Hey, Austin. We're all What's having up? a discussion here about music. So thank you for joining us, Austin. So I think the next person we want to hear from, I'll go ahead and go through again, kind of the same as we introduce ourselves. So I'll go ahead and go to Mikhail. Hi. Um, so the, the first thing that came up for me is that I, I absolutely love music, but um, I think one of the things that music does really profoundly is it makes, because music is so powerful, people fall in love with musicians. Um, and so there's a big, there's a running joke in our house about me falling in love with classical musicians. So there's a cellist named Nina Kotova, a violinist named Nadia Salerno Sonnenberg, and, um, and I've seen them perform live, and then I have all their CDs and everything, but when I, you know, I, I imagine them playing, I've written poetry about this, but, which is another thing that's really interesting about music, it's informed a lot of my poetry, so there's that cross um, thing. But I literally will swoon when these two musicians get up on the stage. And so Sabrina, my wife, says, Nina, 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 Nadia, Nadia, Nadia. <laughs> because of course, it's just, it's the music that I'm responding to, um, as well as who, as who they are. And I think it, I think you really see that like with rock musicians or anything, you know, when all these people fall in love with them, so. I think mean, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Mikhail. And yeah, that brings up a really good point, especially with poetry. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a podcast the other day that it was actually interviewing a whole bunch of uh, people that rap, and they just all of mm -hmm. them have one thing in common they started with poetry. <laughs> so that's really yeah. cool. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And our perceptions of yeah. the celebrity too. I like how you brought that up too, because they might yeah. be very different That's... from um, mm -hmm. their, so their, their music persona may be very different from their actual persona. <laughs> so it's really cool. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for uh, one sharing. Thing, whenever, <laughs> uh, whenever Sam and I were talking a little bit about how uh, we we're going to put this together and throwing around some ideas, uh, one thing, uh, that oh no i lost my train of thought i'm sorry go on with what you're saying i was just interrupting no, <laughs> no you i thought of something i lost it but i'll mention it if i remember later. yeah definitely <laughs> jot it down or something <laughs> great oh i remember it was a, a, when we were talking about about brain waves coming into sync how you know when they hook uh people to ekg machines and then those people sing in harmony their brave waves uh brain waves will li literally sync up and I think that's where part of that intimacy comes from that Mikhail yeah. was talking about that. Yeah. So, you know, I've often felt closer to um, people I've played music with or performed with mm -hmm. than, you know, people I've had uh, relationships, other types of relationships with. So, uh, yeah, I really think there's something there that cut because we're so removed from each other, but there's something about music that's so intimate and that, that whenever they look scientifically, sure enough, our brains do link up in a way that they don't that they don't see in, in other types and other times in life you know so mm -hmm. Sean, Sean I love that you said that because um, I listen to all kinds of music but I am trained as a violinist and a pianist so and have played in orchestras and things so I think part of the intimacy that I feel especially with a classical musician is that I f I'm feeling the instrument too as well as hearing it, you know, because I know how, I mean, I'm not as good anywhere near as good, but I have a sense of how to play the violin or the cello or the piano. So that's one of the reasons I tend to fall in love with those kinds of musicians. <laughs> and I was classically trained. I mean, that that's the kind of music that I trained, that I played, so. Yeah, just like appreciating how hard it is to do it. That's, I, I like that point too. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to Carl. Okay, I just have a, an observation and a question. And uh, 
I have three friends that play in an orchestra here in Las Cruces. And whenever I go, I've noticed that the music is more meaningful in person, being there. Mm -hmm. And I think I know why, but versus listening to it on, on the radio or, or, or even, um, even in video. And I, being there in person is a whole different dynamic. Is, and so I, I, my wild thought about it is, is that you get to interact with the people playing. You don't interact, but you emotionally you do. You see them playing and you see them mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. personally. And, and it, it makes, so there's some kind of a contact going on there. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, like I've seen so, like lots of live shows sometimes where with an inattentive audience and you can see, tell that the, the band or whoever's performing really suffers for it. And then I've seen sometimes just one good listener show up and there can be only three people watching the band, but one good listener and that band will turn on, you know what I mean? They'll be playing for that person. And, and yeah, definitely. I think there's a participatory, uh, participatory kind of relationship there being as a witness to it in the room. And then also, of course, you know, audiophiles love to talk about the limits of recording technology and the harmonics that are missed. And that goes back to the, the hidden harmonics that, you know, we hear an, uh, uh, a, root, a root note, but our ear recognizes all these overtones, but a lot of times we don't consciously think about that. And yeah, when, uh, those waves will reinforce each other in a room and being in that room is, yeah, definitely a totally different thing than watching a video or even the best recording. Great, thank you so much, Carl, for sharing that. And Sean, I'm loving that you're kind of adding your, your expertise into it at the end. So I think we'll keep this theme going. <laughs> so, and again, we'll try to keep to two minutes as much as we can, um, which I think we've been doing a great job. So we'll go ahead and move on to Susanna. Oh, I love music. I love dancing. I could have a headache and everything hurts, but when I hear music, my headache goes away and I'm dancing. Once I finish dancing, I have all these pains again. <laughs> but my husband, isn't that weird? Because I love dancing. I could be washing dishes and hearing the music and I get my husband, let's dance. We dance in the kitchen or wherever. So yeah, even it helps me a lot when I, I drive a lot. Um, usually uh, two hour drives from different communities communities here in uh, in Las Cruces, I go to Lordsburg, and when I go far, I just blast the music on, and I'm there. Keeps me awake, at least. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it helps me a lot. I love music, yes. My mother, when we were little, she used to dance with us, so I did the same thing with all of my children, so we all love music. I don't know how to play any instrument. I did try, when I was in high school, a class where you could play different instruments. The, what do you call that? The art or... It's a big thing that you go like that. The harp? Yeah, the, the harp. harp. The mm -hmm. harp, the piano. I tried everything. I even tried a violin. But, you know, <laughs> those days, um, my mom wanted me home. I was the eldest of the, mm. of the females. So I had to take care of the kids. But I even joined the A choir. So. <laughs> but I never got to go anywhere. But I do love music. So it helps me relax. It helps me, you know, gets me out of the bad mood or gets me into a good mood. And when I want to rest, I always uh, sleep with the radio on and turn stuff at a certain time. When I met my husband, he said he thought it was weird that I would fall asleep with the radio on. So now he's used to it too. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought up dancing because that was kind of the ingredient I was was forgetting is how yeah music not just uh, can change the way we feel but makes want to move our body and that's uh, a really interesting thing. Like you don't listen to a lecture or even a poem and you know that doesn't like inspire you want to move your body so that, that really shows yeah that that is something magical there with music mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing susana and then maybe if we have time at the end i would love to talk about how music plays into people that are hard of hearing or deaf i mean we'll we might be able to talk about it at the end i think that'd be great mm -hmm. um so we'll go ahead and move on to beth See music. Um, I also I haven't played an instrument before, but I think I've always like 
had like music instrument crushes, if that makes sense. Like if I did play instruments, this is what I would play. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but I did pretend to play the flute, um, which isn't one of my music, my instrument crushes, but I did pretend to play the flute for like a year in fifth grade because you got to get out of class, like, I don't know, like 10 minutes early or something. So like, and I was in all of like the band things. I don't know how they, like maybe it was just because I was little, they didn't say like, we know you're not playing the flute. Like I don't, I'm not really <laughs> sure how I got away with it. I was like one of two flute players and I was not doing it. So I don't know. Um, but uh, let's see. There's there's a lot of stuff I could say about music, but I, I definitely um, agree that seeing someone live um, makes a huge mm -hmm. difference in like how you connect to their to their music and or like even knowing I don't know the knowledge that someone might not play well live sometimes like makes me not like music as much I think it works both ways somehow just because I think I don't know it, I think it, it, it matters almost like what they're giving you is actually them if that makes sense I don't know but um yeah I what else were we supposed to talk about? Music songs that we like? How? <laughs> well, no pressure, Matthew. You don't, uh, you know, I think <laughs> some good things there. Like one thing I might, might, what, if, I, if there's any myth I would like to shatter though, it's that you, any person has to have a talent to play music. It just, uh, because that's what I, I believed in that myth for a long time. And it kept me from picking up the guitar until I was like 23. And I was like, oh yeah, no, if you like don't know how to play by the time you're 17, you're just like, you don't have the top for it. It's just like some people are painters and some people aren't. But I mean, later I realized and really kicked myself for not taking the time earlier because yeah, it's, you know, part of, uh, you know, part, uh, it's just part of being human in a way, you know what I mean? And it's, it's definitely the way our, our culture has grown has been really rooted in music, even probably language and things like that music probably even preceded language and is probably the root of language so um so yeah don't anybody feel like that you can't be a musician or that you missed the boat or didn't have the right you know born with the right talent because it's uh, definitely just about the desire to want to do it and practicing it and, and and everybody it's everybody's right it's like everybody can sing everybody can dance if they want to anybody can play music and everybody's a musician you know so Great. That's such a good point, Sean. And thank you so much for sharing that. That's a funny story. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and go on to Erin. So I play video games. I play good video games, but the music from the video games that I play is just so beautiful, just so calming. I especially like playing like nature video games where you're like, a mama lynx protecting your babies or whatever. And um, I really like those games because, and then the music that goes with those games just follows the flow of the game so good. And it has like this calmness and this meaningfulness. And it just always calms me down and stuff. Especially when I have to take the cats to the vet because I don't like doing that. So I listen to that beautiful, calming, meaningful music that's just, so beautiful and you know and it can cause uh, tension and anxiety too yeah. right when you hear that bump 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 you're like oh no here comes a, there's a boss somewhere around here and you hear the, the, the just a little bit of a bass thump or something like that and you you, you know you know it, uh instinctively that oh that means that there's trouble here or you know yeah. that's amazing how you can how things like that can be communicated uh through yeah, the video game medium yeah, Sean, that's the, both of you. That's such a good point because I was just, Aaron, I, Aaron, I was like going with you it, with that too. I keep thinking about all the calming that it's bringing me, but Sean brought it back. Yeah, it can cause you anxiety too. So it just shows how it play on our feelings. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Aaron. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to Adalis. Hello, everyone. Um, well, Something that I've always found amazing about music. Um, I remember when my grandmother, she was going under chemotherapy. And um, I remember it was like all the family was together and we were, me and my cousins were listening to music and 
we were trying to be in the room with her and you know trying to light things up and we were all playing our own types of music and I remember you know my grandma she was kind of you know tired but she was trying to engage and I was like you know what I told my cousin like let's try to find music from when she was young and we started playing um like artists of like Leo Dan and Miguel Gallardo and all that stuff and like her eyes like lit up and like all of a sudden it was just like this burst of energy and she started talking about like her friends and how she could remember you know going to like the school dances and all that and it was just like completely Mm -hmm. turned around and that even like livened us as well so yeah I just find how like powerful music can be to even like restore someone's like energy and like health it's crazy and the way it can cut through uh, some of the things like Alzheimer, I've seen like real, uh, like heartwarming videos of yeah, people in, uh, you know, nursing facility and are so cut off socially. And then they'll put on some headphones for, and, you know, so removed from uh, suffering something from like Alzheimer's. And uh, then, yeah, just the, the change on their face and the, how they come back to you and there's communication that's possible. And th- yeah, it's a miracle. It's literally a miracle. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's actually pretty, it, it, when you were talking about that, at least I was thinking about Coco. <laughs> the, I don't know if you've seen that movie, but it's the same thing. She, the, the grandma was just, the great grandma was not like remembering anything. And then he started singing and everything came back. And I, um, it's, it's proven for sure. <laughs> they don't pull that from out of, out of the air. It definitely happens. So I think we're going to go ahead and go to Austin. Austin, if you could share something about music, that'd be awesome. Do you have a favorite song, Austin? Oh. Eric Clapton. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's which awesome. which song is your favorite song of Eric Clapton? Because he's amazing. Do you have any favorites, uh, Austin? Austin, uh, he is really interesting to me. Which one? Badge. Yeah. Yeah, earlier, Austin, when we were talking about how powerful it is to see someone uh, play in person, I, uh, I haven't seen Eric Clapton in concert ever. Um, and I've only seen videos, so that's still like a little bit removed. But uh, one thing that's always struck me about him is um, how you very much would have had to been like almost standing there in front of him, watching him play in the same room to kind of get the full sense of what he is doing uh, and to see what the, 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 not just what he's playing on the guitar, but the way the actual guitar is reacting and the way that people didn't have access to amps that loud before. So he was, he was uh, pioneering a lot of the stuff um, just based on a uh, new technology that was coming out and on, just on, on that new ability to, for amplifiers that could play that loud, it opened up a whole new realm of music. It was very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing Austin. And I actually had never heard that song and I went and looked at it and it's actually when um, Eric Clapton was in cream. So that was a, <laughs> so which one is it? The, it's, it's called, I looked at I Badge, and then it's, um, you know how Eric Clapton was in the group Cream before? Yes, that. Badge. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, so I'm definitely going to look yeah, at that. Cream, yeah. I have a lot of songs here written down that I'm excited to listen to. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, I definitely put Cream on there. We already ate through our time. <laughs> I can't oh, believe no. how these things go, but thank you all so much for sharing and I just think it's great that everyone was so vulnerable because it just, I don't, it just makes me, I, I'm sure everyone else feels this way too, just closer to each and every one of you when we talk about food or talk about music. And it just makes me just feel like 
it's just so much better of a community. I'm glad we're still able to do it, even though we can't see each other in person. And since we have two more minutes, I was wondering if anyone had any announcements or last minute things that they wanted to talk about. Maybe Sean, if you had anything else to talk about, but again, we just have just these last two minutes, but I'm so glad I got to hear from everyone. Well, I just pulled up this song and it's about two minutes, the one that Austin recommended. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, we can listen to Austin's yeah. song. That's such a good idea. <laughs> and you guys are missing out because you don't get to see the fantastic costume stuff they're wearing. Some of you were there, though. I might remember the kind of clothes that they wore. It's really... <laughs> yes, that's amazing. Well, we're right at 3 o'clock now. Thank you all for sharing so much. And we have um, United Friday every Friday at two o'clock and we have some people coming up. We have a lot, a list of people that are willing to do United Friday. So keep, uh, keep, um, uh, keep looking at the website and everything to see who's up next. Um, and then we also have coffee hour every Wednesday at 10. Um, and any more events? Um, we always want more people in the time bank. I want to welcome Susana, our newest time bank member. So, <laughs> so excited to have you here. Um, our next time bank orientation is going to be in July. So if you know anyone that wants to join the time bank and Carl has been awesome to referring someone else. So thank you so much for um, doing that. Word of mouth is huge with our time bank. Um, am I forgetting anything else, Carrie, as far as events or? Mikhail has an event. I, not an event. I have a okay. question because I was writing down songs. Um, Adelise, can you tell me again the song or a couple of the songs or type the names into the chat of oh, the ones of your grandmother listened to? I'd yes. love to listen to them. Of course, I'll have type it right here in the chat. Okay, thank you. Um, Samantha? Yes. You were asking about the deaf, how they yes. the music. They they can if they use if they go to a concert, you use a balloon. They they you give them a balloon and there's been a film somewhere where they show a, a group of deaf individuals that went to a concert and they have a balloon and the vibration, they feel the vibration. But oh. even even the dances and stuff, the floor if the music because the music is so loud, the vibration on the floor, I mean deaf people dance. I don't know if you know yeah. that famous dancer. Yes, I've seen it. I was in when I was in elementary school, we saw we saw a group I think from the school in, in Santa Fe who were from the, oh. the uh, Deaf and Hard of Hearing School, and yeah, they danced to like uh, to be, like Michael Jackson, like beat it and stuff like that, and that's what they said. They, uh, because they were on a stage and they could feel it through the the floor and the stage, they could feel the beats. Yeah, that is amazing to know <laughs> my son-in-law when he was little he used to dance the uh, uh, mexican uh, what do you call it folklorico uh -huh. yeah, my, my, his mother was telling me he was invited to go to mexico to a talk show a famous talk show because don francisco because uh -huh. he was the first deaf that they knew that danced folklorico and he was totally deaf so uh -huh. but there's a famous a famous act deaf uh model and his dancer also what's his name um nigel or something like that i think his name is i can't think of it right now but anyway he's a famous dancer who came out on the tv and um so there's a lot of individuals that are deaf 
<laughs> they can do the dance. My daughter who's deaf, she loves dancing. Like I tell you, we taught them so she just loves to dance. So everybody dances still. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Thank you awesome. so much for coming back to that, Susan. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm glad you remembered that. I definitely wanted to yeah. hear that earlier. <laughs> so thank you so much for bringing that up again. Um, well, thanks again, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Sean, for facilitating hey. Thank you, this. Sean. Thank and... you guys for being nice to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we really appreciate it. You are, you're such a great facilitator. Thank you so much. And cool. thanks, everyone, again, for sharing your vulnerabilities with music. And it was awesome. So we'll end like we always do by picking a word, counting down from three, and then saying the word and clapping three times. So... I think I'm going to stick with the theme that the facilitator has to pick the word. I've been doing Ooh. it a couple times. So Sean, go ahead and uh -huh. pick the word. And then also before we do that, Beth said, um, um, cause Tess actually had to leave early, but it was her birthday today. So if oh, you no. have any I'm, type of a, connection with hey, Tess. Everybody. Hey, we should all send her messages. And, uh, oh yeah. Hey, yeah. Beth. So Beth put it in the chat. It looks like. Oh, she did. Cool. It, or no, it's, that, that's your well, number, right? Yeah, if you okay. if you have it, I can give you text Tess's number to text her, but I didn't want to just yeah. draw it. No, no problem. <laughs> so, yeah, so text the number that's in the chat. I want to, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, so text that number, um, and if you want to wish Tess a happy birthday. So, Sean, go ahead and pick that word, and we can go ahead and get on with our uh, weekend. <laughs> how about, because it's on, on theme, and it's what we try and do here at the time being, how about harmony? Yes, I love Thank that. You. Okay, so I'll go ahead and count down. Three, two, one. Harmony. Harmony. <laughs> and I'll be here if anyone has any questions. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Cool. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Great to see you all next week. Have fun. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye, Austin. <laughs> Come down, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs>